We're doing 2 Corinthians chapter 9 today, brothers and sisters. Subtitle on the Thomas Nelson Study Bible. And I always like to tell people about the Thomas Nelson. I think it was, you know, back in the seven, the late, latter 1700s is when that group got together and they, they, they formed this Christian ministry of trying to preserve and keep the word of God the way it was from the 1700s into today. And they've been doing revisions. This particular Bible is the second edition. And, and it's become, the word of God is, is my best friend. You know, when you say, when you sing that song, what a friend you have in Jesus. Well, I think everybody here in our group here is seasoned in somewhat a way. And, and some of the people that were here early on, you know, I can't cover everything, but we cover it by recording now and people can go back if they're at work and they can go back and listen to it. And I've gotten a lot of remarks from people. So I think what we're doing is pretty good. I think God is with all of us. But, you know, uh, with the addition of us putting the Daily House of Prayer up on the internet right now, nobody's got an excuse to take a moment and listen to what we're saying in it. You know, I derail sometimes with my preaching, brothers and sisters, but that's because I've been reading this Bible for many, many years. And it's not the first time I'm ever reading the scripture. This prayer group has done the, the Bible a few times through. War on the Saints now a few times through. And we just enjoy the camaraderie of fellowship. There's always new people coming, people going, and they take what they learn and they walk with it. And, and one of the most precious things about opening a Bible every day, and I learned from you know, I really got nailed by my mother-in-law. I tell everybody that. But the ministry of the saints, four. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and, and start here this morning. For it's touching and ministering to the saints. It is super flu, fluctuous for me to write to you. So here Paul's continuing. He says, for I know the frowardness of your mind for which I boast of you to them at Macedonia that Acadia was ready a year ago. And, and it speaks something here about Paul. He's, he's talking to the, the believers there, Corinth, and he's saying, and your zeal hath provoked very many. Provoked gets people upset. Here. That brother walked into a Baptist church with a wind whirly book and they ripped it up. That's what happens when you're, you're, you're being filled with the Holy Ghost and you're really seeking God. And you just want to know everything you can know about God, regardless. And then you go into a, a, a place that's got legalistic. This is the way we go to church. And you're bound. When you, all you're trying to do is seek the truth in God's word. I, I get moved by some of the stuff I read in scripture. And then I see how churches operate in the natural and real time life. And Paul's writing here, he says, yet I have, he says, yet have I sent the brethren, lest our boasting of you should be in vain in this behalf that I said, ye may be ready, lest happily. If they of Macedonia come with me and find you unprepared, those are some harsh words, that we say not ye should be ashamed and the same confident of boasting. And then he rolls right into, you know, he, he's talking to the people. And I, I take this stuff seriously when I'm reading because I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not the most learned person and that's why Sometimes when I dig into the commentaries, the light bulb can go on and I can start to relate because the same spirits that were operating back here in Corinth, they were operating in churches today. And that's what solidifies the fact that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, that this whole book that we all highly esteem is a book of war, spiritual war. And the more you read the Bible, the more you want to get closer with Jesus. 
and the more you want to follow the word of God. Because there's something radically happening even today in the world. And the factions are there. There's lawlessness abounding in the United States right now. Who would think 50 or 60 years ago? And, and Paul, he's talking to them at Corinth, and he says, therefore, I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren that they would go before unto you and make up beforehand your bounty. In other words, a reward. And it goes on and it says, whereof you had noticed before that the, the same might be ready as a matter of bounty and not as of your covetousness. And what Paul's talking about here is being a cheerful giver. You know, God's a spirit. When we're going out and we're doing the things commanded by God of everyone that calls themselves a believer, well, the first thing is you're not your own. You're, you're, you, you now trans, you come out of darkness and now you become a servant of the one that you believe in. And that's why he says, take up the cross and follow me. The word of God here in verse six says, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. I think we're all old enough to understand that in anything you do. But when you do everything for the glory of God and you start serving God and, and you're speaking God's word and, and you don't have to be a, you are the church. You're the church of the living God. Each and every one that's hearing me speak today, you need to speak this to someone else. Not just this chapter. Remember when we do the warfare prayer, we've surrendered to be part of his great commission. He, he commands us in the revised, re, the revised one that I, I, I speak here, that we're to go out and baptize people. We're to teach them all things that God has taught us in the word of God. Literally, we're going to speak Jesus. And we're all accountable. And it's not about money here. It's the spiritual spreading of the gospel that's the most important thing you know when jesus sent them out he says hey you're going to find out people are going to take care of you you're going to find out that let your peace be upon a place that receives you and you know i put all this into practice when i was in my early 30s and i got saved i just simply read the new testament started doing what it said and God was blessing me. And, and, and I can go back in my heart and think about all the families. And, you know, I myself, I got baptized in a swimming pool in a guy's backyard down the Jersey Shore because I'd never been water baptized. And I just wanted to follow what the word of God says. Believe and be baptized. Believe. Hey, my, my, my mobster friend, my wife's friend, he ended up getting baptized and, and he, he had racist opinions, man. And he had, God put him in a, a solid black church, and he fell in love with the pastor. From being a crazy man, breaking legs, to loving the very people he hated. And God took that right out of him in the beginning of his salvation. And like everybody else, hey, John, you got to go get baptized. And we were there to watch him get baptized. What a, what a great thing that was. To, to actually activate your faith, to, to believe what Jesus Christ speaks, not to, not to one church, but to everyone that believes. So he says here, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Do you ever think that because you're coveting and everything else in life that that you're not trusting the word of God. You know, one of the things I did, I always taught, you need to be a cheerful giver. You give your time, you give your life. When I first started serving God, I was serving people at a soup kitchen. At the same time, 
I was making money in a, a seafood industry, but God humbled me to where I was waiting on people that didn't have enough money to feed themselves. And when you see the different, and, and these people were getting saved. They were homeless people in Hudson County. And I got more joy in the leading people in the Lord than I did in the work world making money because people were coming into who? God's kingdom. And I always preach it to people. You know, today's world, everything's measured on the dollar or your time is money. Well, what about when you're helping people? Don't you think God sees that? And when you sow bountifully, there's no greater bounty than to get someone saved, people. So you can look at this word in many different situations. And I also know that when you're humble, God will open a door where you're going to get blessed. And that, that's even in the workplace. You know, I stumble into all the wisdom I get because the, the, the most important thing that I've learned about Jesus is do not despair. Don't give up. Keep talking to him. Keep praying to him. Keep listening to that, that, that silver line book that we got in our laps. Mine's in my lap right now. You know, I've even got my eyes closed while I'm talking to you guys. Because sometimes you need to hear it from the heart of people. People go down so many trails and the simplicity is Jesus. Every man, according as he what? Purposed in his heart. You can't get any deeper than that because there ain't one of us here that can really know except God what someone's purposing in their heart, especially bringing condemnation, guilt, and shame to anyone that's trying to get up every day and do what? Carry the cross, follow the Lord, obey the word of God. I want to look at that again. It's highlighted. Every man according as he purposed. So we also know what I teach here. You guys know me well enough. When he says, man, woman, you're from man. But because of the world today, everything's changing in creation order. I'm not saying it from my, I'm saying it from what I read in the Bible. See, God's opinion is the only one that matters. Every man as he purposed in his heart, so let him or woman, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Whether it's financial, whether it's clothing, whether it's your time, everything we do, we're supposed to be doing to glorify God, period. Even to the fact when someone makes a comment, you say, God bless you. Whether they're a believer or not, you're asking God to bless them. What's the greatest blessing anybody can have in this world? That you pray for their salvation. That they could be a member of once I was lost and now I'm saved. Saved is used so many times in the Bible. So obviously God wants to save us. He wants to save everybody. We pray that in the warfare prayer all the time for all men and women to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. The knowledge of the truth is the word of God, brothers and sisters. And so many, even young Christians that they just follow things. And instead of sitting down and taking the time to read the Bible and to have a relationship with the spirit of God, who when, when you get saved, he seals you. So it's up to you whether you're going to sit at his feet and listen, it's not my problem. I sit at God's feet every day. I have to be an example to other people in the way I act. And sometimes I don't act properly, but I get back down to earth quick enough. Why? Because there's always people praying for us. 
And, and there's always, you know, I always go back to the temple. Jesus was upset with what they were doing in his father's house. And then I fast forward ahead to where we are now. We're the temple of the Holy Spirit. Wow. You don't think Jesus might be a little upset? To whom he loves, he chastises. You, you get out of balance with the word of God, and you're going to have some struggles, afflictions, and things, because God's trying to wake you up. Get back into the word of God. Yes, he's your savior. you got to give him preeminence. Why? Listen to what it says here in verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always, always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. God expects us to work. God understands everything we go through. It's, it's the simplicity of, I'm in a car. I see that Julie calls me. I'm on my way to the dentist. I always talk to someone when I'm on the highways. So everybody in our fellowship knows where I am. I have plenty of people that if I call, they answer the phone. And if they don't call, they're busy. Someone else answers the phone. That's something that I put into practice since myself. You know, I have family. That's why I get upset when Christians that call themselves Christians don't. We have a seven-day prayer group. Prayer is essential for Christians. It's essential that if someone's hurting over here in left field, we get people praying for them. When you're in one faith, one spirit, one accord, you learn to seek God in all things. And the fervent prayer of the righteous. So, you know, I want a prayer team. I want people that we can reach out to. I, I'm always reminded how many people were praying for me when I was in a coma. So I have to put that into practice every day in my life. So I looked, I looked at my phone in the car. I'm driving a car. I looked at the phone. I seen that. And then as soon as Julie told me, because I'm a heart guy, you know, I'm talking about, I love God's creation. And I didn't want to see, I did not want to see that puppy be put down. And God knows that. What I'm telling you, I was hurting for days over that little dog. But as soon as she gave me the praise report, I had tears of joy. Because God shows up in the little things, people, every day in our lives. That's if you include him in everything. And that's what I get out of reading God's word all the time, because he says, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you. So I love it when the little prayers get answered. And I get really upset when, when people don't get involved in praying, because praying is where God brought me many years ago, and I put it in the wall going into the sanctuary my house, God's house, will be a house of prayer for all people. doesn't matter what faith you are at that point. We need to pray for everybody to find God, to get touched by the creator of all creation. And it's been a, a mission for me to want to pray for the Jewish people, the Hindus, the Buddhists, the Islamic people. I get so thrilled every time God puts someone in my life that I could be a light to, and I get even more thrilled when I lead them to Christ. Because that's our journey. We represent Jesus Christ live and in color in a world that's dying, people. And I said it yesterday. Everybody, oh, I want to raise the dead. Raise the spiritual dead. I can't emphasize that enough, you know, and you'll see how many people are serving the God of this world. You're going to see how many people are really serving the God that you say you love, which you can't see him yet. I heard a testimony Steve was given, how the enemy was trying to dupe him this morning, 
there's only a few people in here listening to what Steve was talking about. And it was classic 101, War on the Saints. And yet so many people really don't study the book. And, you know, I try everything to help people get to understand that we are really in a war. And the war don't end until we go to heaven. You know, read the book of Revelation. So I look at the word this morning. And he says, as it's written, he that disperse it abroad and had given to the poor, his righteousness remained forever. This is a true story. I had just went broke, bankrupt, everything else. I landed on my feet. I heard that the, the AM radio station. And because of this scripture, it says... He had dispersed abroad. He had given to the poor. His righteousness remained forever. I turned around and wrote a check that I really didn't have the money at the time. But I wanted to do that scripture. And it's it, really amazing because it really happened to me as a brand new born again Christian. And I, I got paid. The guy mocked me. He called me Reverend Charles Costello. This is when I first got born again, people. And this scripture had so much to do with my heart and trusting the word of God, you know, that I actually read this scripture. And you know what I did? I did exactly what it said. I wrote a check. I heard them crying out to help orphans in India. I had a passion to do the true religion. And I wiped out the little bit that I had and I sent it overseas. Now that's faith. And it goes here and it says, always toward, he says, is, and God is able. You, you read this inwardly in the word of God here this morning, eight and nine. Just listen to it. God is able to make all grace abound toward you that you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. God makes it happen. Even to the point of me crying out about the parking lot, the wood, the tree, and everything else, God hears my prayers because a long time ago, I stepped out with a leap of faith, people, as it is written. He had dispersed abroad. Abroad means totally out of your, your, your being. When I read that, and I heard the people on uh, AM radio crying out for help, and it was for a children's hospital, I just wanted to do something good. And I read this. He had given to the poor. My whole ministry, the first few years of my walk with God, wasn't a you know, I was doing some deliverance, but not on the level that God has shown me now. But the, the thing here is, I had a heart to help the poor. And it's written in God's word here. We're looking at and what happens when you give to the poor. His righteousness remains forever. Now, he that ministered seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. And guess what? You want to walk with God in the kingdom of God? You need God's righteousness operating in your life. And you only get that when you, you start walking and doing the things that the word of God tells each and every one of us to do. You got to take it personally to heart the word of God. Now, my heart wasn't deceitful and wicked. That's why I said some people take scripture out of contents. They need to learn to read the whole Bible and live inside the word of God. You know, and he goes on here and he says, minister bread. It, it says here, now he that ministered seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness, being enriched 
enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which cause it through us giving thanksgiving in to God. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Every good gift comes from above. It's been, you know, if, if I could say anything, a nobody that's been given something to do just to preach the gospel. And every one of you are ordained to preach the gospel, men and women, to evangelize. You know? No, the women shouldn't be the head of a, a congregation in a church. I will never step over that boundary because the word of God doesn't lie. You know, you, you really got to get into the spiritual. You got to be around people that are spiritual when you're in deliverance. And, and, and we're just beginning to do things that because of technology, we're going to be able to show a lot of people that the word of God is truth because God's going to confirm ministries that are preaching the truth bunch of nobodies and god god took nobodies in the bible go back and read your bibles and god made a nobody somebody always remember that but the word in closing here because we got five verses here we go it says being enriched in everything to all bountifulness which cannot which cause it through us we give thanksgiving to god i bless god every day for what he's done for me He's given me the desires of my heart. I don't need, I don't, I, you, you don't need a lot of people to have a desire of your heart. You need to have people that are serving God. You know, if 20 goes out and wins souls, everybody wins one soul. You got 20 new people into the kingdom of God. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. You got to believe that God is who he is and he wants to use you too. And every time something good happens, you get excited. You're allowed to boast in Christ. You're allowed to get excited giving your testimony. There's too many dead churches out here right now. And you wonder why it is, because they don't read their Bibles. They just read what the preacher's saying. And a lot of them sit there. It's like deadheads, you know, instead of coming alive in Christ and being the man or woman that God's called us to be. He goes down here and he says, for the administration of this service, not only supply it the want of the saints, the want of the saints, listen to what Paul's saying here, but is abundant also by many thanksgiving unto God. So you got to be crying out to God. You got to be praising God for answered prayer because God is bountiful. That's what the whole, uh, Part of this read today from verse five all the way to 15. That's what happens when you become a cheerful giver. See, God's looking at our heart in all the different ways we respond to the gospel. And there's so many ways that you can give. You give your time, and, and you end up losing your life. When you really start understanding God's spirit. Some of the things that used to be important to me, you, you asked my wife, I, I'm, I'm not moved by it anymore. You know, the only thing that moves me is being able to help somebody get closer to God. And the only way you can get close to God, brothers and sisters, is exactly what I'm sitting here saying this morning. Open your Bibles and read to them. Talk to them with the word of God. Let them have ears to hear. You can do more damage to Satan's kingdom by just speaking the word of God and, and, and orchestrating what some of these words really mean. Because for the administration of this service, not only supplied the want of the saints, because most people, I, we sing that song, I'm lost without him. How can you walk with God and then you break away and you're never going to be the same? That's why I like that song. Those young people sing, they're never going to be the same. They found the truth, Jesus Christ. Their lives, even at a young age, began to change. When I got saved, I was a young man, not young like some of these teenagers and the kids in their 20s, but I was in my 30s. 
and I've graduated now to the point where I've been saved more than I was unsaved. And I'm sure some of you can relate because I've got older brothers and sisters in the prayer group that a lot of them have been saved a long time, some longer than me. But God's no respecter of people. God looks at all of us equally, and we have to equally receive the word of God. And, and, and in verse 12, he says, the wants of the saints, but is an abundant also, what? By many thanksgivings unto God. So the, the saints of the Lord and the ones that are hearing his voice and following him, we're blessing him. We're praising him. I praise God every day. You know, maybe I can't sing that good, but I'm singing to him and I'm sure he's happy with what I'm doing because he says, make a joyful noise unto him. Come into his courts. Well, that's wherever you are because he's omnipresent. You could be walking down the highway and start singing to God. And it's real personal when you get a melody in your heart and you just start singing some songs. I love you, Lord Jesus. Most people think we're crazy. Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the afternoon, Jesus in the evening. What do you think you're going to do when you get to heaven? Eternity, people. You might as well learn to praise him now. He bought you. And enjoy the ride. You, you, you could have many blessings right now if you just zero in on the word of God and say, Lord, I'm going to live to serve you. I'm going to surrender my life and open your Bibles and read and start doing what you can. Your part, everybody's different. Whether you give someone a coat, you give someone a glass of water. There's so many illustrations by Christ in the gospels. If you see someone broken down on the highway, you win any way you look at it. Because if you're really, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you're saved. You break, someone takes you and beats you up, takes your car, you still win. Someone shoots you, you win. But see, God's greater than we can think sometimes that if you're doing God's work, he'll protect you. I've seen that happen so many times in many people's lives, including my own. And, and, and look how it's going to end here today. Whilst by the experiment of the ministration, they glorify God for your professed subjection unto what? The gospel of Jesus Christ. And yeah, that's why I ended with amazing love. Because he died, we're forgiven. That's the gospel. If the law could have got you into heaven, we wouldn't have needed a savior. All you got to do is give him the glory. All you got to do is say, hey, thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. And it, it, for everybody, it's a choice. You can choose. It's not predestination. God gives us a brain and he gives us Choose this day whom you're going to serve. Go back to the read here. He says, for your liberal distribution unto them and unto all men. Well, that brings me back to I'm going to give until I got no more to give. If I was down to my last two slices of bread and someone needed one of the slices, I'm going to give it up. The blessing is in following the word of God. And if you're able to really fast and pray because you've been dis disciplining the flesh, remember something, the flesh is wicked, full of corruption. And when you master the flesh, you start to walk in the spirit. And, and it goes on here, 14 and 15, listen to what it says. And by their prayer for you, which long after, it says, which long after you for the exceedingly grace 
of God in you. Do you love them today? Do you serve them today? And you can't even boast in yourself because you're saved by grace. It's a gift from God. You didn't do anything to get it. All you did was believe in Jesus Christ. And, and then what does it say at 15 that closes? It says, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Man, that says so much to me. Every time I open the ministry to the saints, that God loves those that love him. God gives to those that are cheerful and serving God. And yesterday, I was telling you how eight and nine go along. And, and it's really exciting in, in 2 Corinthians going into the rest of this book. It is a testimony to others. A year before the zeal of the Corinthians had stirred others to give now. Now, Paul had to stir up the Corinthians. We must not give to be praised by people. And, and you know, that goes back to the teachings I do in Matthew chapter 6. I I because I, I didn't record any a lot of stuff over the years and I'll have to revisit and go back. Uh, but I've been preaching this since I got saved in the very early days of my life because Matthew 6 verses 1 to 4 we give in secret but we must also be a good example before others if we make promises you know, I, I don't know where to go with people that call themselves Christians anymore. I try to do basically everything. The only thing I'm a little slow on is getting material out to somebody. But that's, that's because that's because of me, and I'm trying to get better at it. I'm not perfect. But when you, when you tell someone that you're going to show up, you're going to do this, you're going to do that, I see it even with a person that doesn't come to MOS. Nice guy, calls himself a believer, tells me how he goes to a, a fundamental church. But it, it goes back to the basics of Christianity. What comes out of a person defiles them. And, and just like the bad music that was coming from the next door neighbor's property. He's got nine acres. I only got four. He had some kind of... And I walked outside, I heard the music, I said, oh my God, good thing we got air conditioning and I'm inside. Because there's, there's music I don't like to hear. It's not worshiping God, I'm not in it. And, and you know, I'm, I try to be careful on the level of songs that I even listen to. But in this, we all have to do what we're going to say. That's why God gave us that scripture, what comes out of our mouths defiles a man. And that's the nature of the beast. That's the nature of exaggeration, you know, and not being truthful with brothers and sisters. And God speaks a lot of that in the word of God. So everything we do, we got to be joyful about, and we got to be doing it unto the Lord. If you want spiritual enrichment from anything you do, you must practice that and be, and be glad in different opportunities that God puts us in to be a giver, whether it's your time, it's finances. You know, it's, it's easy for a person that gets a lot of money coming in to send a lot of money out. It's easier for politicians who got these exorbitant salaries and what they make to do and live the lifestyles they live. But most people that are on pensions and social security, and you, you're on a budget, you know, I'm on a budget. A everybody I know, I, I don't consider myself upper middle class. You know, there's a lot of kinks in the armor here on my property and everything else. But I, I'm, I'm glad to help always do something for someone else. You know, there's not too many testimonies I can give other than that I prayed and God gave me a building. And God's supplied my needs so that I can be the fiduciary of a building, but I still got to make the building. God's got to help me. Of course, he always does make it be fruitful for God's kingdom. And 
that's where you must practice and be glad for any opportunities that any one of us can have to serve God's kingdom. And then you look at God's promises of what he does when you're faithful. And, and you don't have to be faithful to anybody but to God. God does know everybody's heart. And if you're doing the best you can do, and you're out there serving God, don't let nobody beat you up. Because there's too many believers that want everybody to do what they're doing. Then there's not enough of believers doing what the Word of God says to do. Just read your Bibles. It's his instruction book for the believers. It's not for the people that don't trust in Jesus Christ. They're not going to, you know, God, this is the children's bread. This is our spiritual meat, our food, so that we can be servants of God. Look at God's promises of what he will do, and then you can look at your own thought pattern and say, man, I can't lose. I win. My name's written in the Lamb's book. I'm a believer. So I always tell people, Find an area of your life where you can serve God. You know, I listened to that schizophrenic woman that got delivered here years ago. She reached out to me and all, all and she told me she did the Halmick maneuver in the nursing home she works at. And last week she saved someone's life. Now, this was a woman that was totally out of her brain 11 years ago. And now she's got a sound mind. It's like, it's not the person I first met that Sharon and me met. God has wonderfully changed this woman in her journey. So it's the same thing with what the, Paul was showing us here today with the Mes Macedonian Christians. Giving was not a chore, but a challenge. It, it isn't a burden. It becomes a blessing. Giving was not something to be avoided, but a privilege to be desired in a person's life. You know, my wife said that to me the other day. She says, I, she went over to by this 70 year old woman that she's friends with. And the woman was out there and showing her this battery weed whacker. And my wife says, I, I, I just want to do some more yard work. And, can we get one of those kind of weed whackers that she has? It's lighter and I can use it to help out. And I looked at my wife and when she came back today, she said, I'm going to go to Home Depot and we're going to get, I said, you're not going anywhere. I already ordered it. It'll be here tomorrow. You know, sometimes you got to do things just on the spur of the moment in anyone's life, whether it be my wife or my friend Donna, who's a widow. And she had nobody helping her in the winter and she needed to clean off a deck. I had an extra piece of equipment on my property. I took a brand new cord, electrical, snow shovel, and I dropped it off at her house. Still had to go somewhere. Took me over an hour to, to, to get that done and bring this lady. And she's been a dear friend for a long time. That's what, that's what God's giving is all about helping people, being part of God's kingdom. And, and uh, you can go anywhere you want to go with this chapter, but it, it, it gives you a walk that every one of us is called to. And that's what cheerful giving is all about. It's not just how much money you give, it's your time. It's everything you do for the kingdom of God. Once again, Whoever's hearing this little message, why don't you just try God? You've heard a lot about him. But why, don't, why don't you make a decision today in your heart? And say, teach me. Show me, God. Show me that your son, Jesus Christ, is the truth, the way, and the life. And if you don't have a Bible, get in touch with us. 201-803-3083. That's my phone number. And God supplies our needs according to his riches and glory, and he wants you to come into his kingdom. And just by faith, 
I'm praying that if you're on the fence and you really don't believe Jesus is God, why don't you talk to him right now? Why don't you ask him who he is and then say, show me, I want to know you. I don't know who the creator is, Father. Show me. And if you cry that out from your heart to God's ears, no matter how, God will make it happen. He might bring a brother or sister into your life who's been telling you about his son, Jesus Christ. And all you got to do is take the offer to proffer. In other words, you'll be blessed. And I hope you enjoyed this little teaching today, and God bless you all. Amen. Amen. Praise you know, the Lord. Ernie, yeah. Sometimes when you get into these little From your heart. it's all this this reading I did today. Yeah, I gave scripture, but there was a lot of hard things that years ago. Yeah, this this was the go-to chapter when I wrote the chat. I got so convicted. I was sitting there at a desk in an office building and where we had shrimp and lobster and a fish cutting going on. And I just sat there and started, and it was an NIV Bible that the supervisor put on my desk when he heard I got born again. And I was reading the Bible and reading the New Testament. And th that, that verse hit me so darn hard that I couldn't, I couldn't get off the chair after I listened <laughs> to Christian radio in New yeah. York City without writing an offering. They were begging for help. And, and that scripture came into my eye view and it made me cry because I had an extra amount of money. And it said, if you can afford to give this money, it'll be, it'll be a memory forever for you. And I just listened to that guy on the radio and I, I got to this thing, may abound, may abound in every good work because why? because I believe the word of God, that I would listen to God's word and help the poor and his righteousness remain forever. And that same radio station, I heard my boyhood pastor, a Lutheran minister, he was on that station and he said, we, wow. have, we have a homeless ministry, a soup kitchen, and we need help. And I'm sitting there at the other end of the, the radio going, Gary, it's Charlie. I'll come and help. <laughs> you was excited. And that's was what it's excited. all about, being a servant. You know, and anything that you can do to increase the faith of someone that has weak faith and have not really given their life over to the Lord. Because they don't see it in Christian that people that call themselves Christian, they see what they see. I do this for you. You got to pay me. You do it. It's a gift. You do it out of your heart. You don't look for anything. What I tell people, pass it on. What I do for you, yeah. pass it on to someone else. Hey, you know, let me, let me read. Because you. You, you, you got this blessing. Bible. You got this Bible. I made sure I put it in yeah, your I do have it, and I read it every day faithfully. And thank you, you look for at, it. Look, at, look what it says on cheerful giving in this Bible. Yeah, I read that. <laughs> the giver is to have a willing heart and a sincere desire to participate in the offering. Paul is not so much interested in their money nor in God, for that matter, as the passage is from Proverbs. And that's the other. And, you know, when I was younger, between these two verses and 22.9 and Proverbs, I melted that day. I was like, wow. oh, my, if God isn't talking to Charlie today. And these people, they were all non-believers in the room, and I was sitting there crying my eyes out. I'm a six-foot-four, 250-pound guy. And I'm crying like a little baby over an NIV Bible because I got touched by God. Hey, Brother Charlie, you might want to uh, hit stop record. Oh, my God. I didn't oh, yeah. even know. Now I got to correct that one. Gerald, I did it again.